You are listening to Inspirado Projecto. Get ready. Wowzers, wows years, ladies, gentlemen, creatures, monsters, extraterrestrials, plants, amphibians, whales, and undiscovered mammalians. <laughs> Of course, all the invisibles. Hello, all my invisibles. My invisible friends, family, ancestors, and descendants. Since everything is all happening now. One big now. Interweaving. One big blanket. We've got an extraordinary, extraordinary episodic available. Oh, we got Marky here. Maybe if we're lucky, we got some purring going on here. Hold on. Giddy. Oh, hi, dear. Hello, dear. Hello, dear. Let's see if we can get some purring going on. Hi. Can you hear some purring, please? Can you hear some purring? Oh, here we go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Looking for adventure. I would ever come my way. Get your motor running. I'll send a head out on the highway. Looking for a vasher. Whatever's coming my way. Come on. So that's Marky. He's like a real life Garfield. This episodic is going to explode your brain. By the way, we have uh, an exclusive, an exclusive Chris Tor Inc. promo. For you, this is to get you a little bit better acquainted. You've heard me talk about Christor, you've heard me talk about the Varels Bridge Society, you've heard me talk about DJ Scaramanga Silk, Wiley Herman, Spencer McCall, and the others. There's so many. The skies, uh, so many things happening. So many parallel things going on. Wait, what's happening here? Did, did someone come walking through here? No. It's not like some guy was like, hey, come on, I'm just going to come on to walk through here. I thought there was like a plumber or something. Like who, it totally sat. I was out there on the balcony. I thought I was like, yeah, I'm just going to make my way through here. And I thought I heard you say something like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's back there or something like that. I'm like, what the heck? Did someone just walk through here, like walk through the apartment? And I was like, no. And he's like, it's all like some guy with yeah, like you just let someone in the door. Southern accent, like yeah. The guy came through, like, I'm just going to come through here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to come through here now. Like, I imagine, like, a guy, like, an older guy, baseball cap, like, a dark gray. Some random man well, I thought, I thought maybe there's some go, because didn't they shut off the, I think they shut off the uh, water earlier today, right? Yeah, they did. I, for some reason, I had stuck in my brain that some, like, maintenance guy came through. Oh, my God. So you get to hear an extraordinary uh, interview with Scar- DJ Scarmanga Silk. This is part two, by the way. We had a part one. And I wanted to space them out. Because these things, you know, there's some convoluted cosmic information on here. Naturally, I want to be able to space it out. Nobody wants to, uh, to uh, you know, it's like when you got too many tabs open on the computer and it starts moving sluggish. You want to be able to, you know, handle it. You want to be able to handle it. So uh, it's like it's like jumping into a video game and not knowing what any of the any of any of what's going on. You're just uh, you're just blasted, man. You're just blasted with a bunch of stuff, man. You're dealing with man. You're dealing with a bunch of stuff, man. So DJ Scarmanga Silk, I'm going to share with you a Crystal Inc. promo. Also, if I'm if I'm hearing his name correctly, Atlas Dragon. From the Varels Bridge Society. This, of course, this of course is a faction of, and also not in addition to, <laughs> the reality of Christor Inc. This is wrapped up within that mythos, and I suggest all of you go to check out ChristorInc.com. I'm of course putting this in the description. You better believe it. Why would I not put a link in here? What kind of mind would I be in if I didn't 
put in a link to lead you there. The breadcrumbs, baby. The breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs. Oh, also, we're going to hear uh, a uh, message from Man Behind the Machine. We, we, we have such an abundance of these messages from Man Behind the Machine. He's undoubtedly um, featured once, twice, perhaps even on some occasions thrice. Uh, but I like to distribute his information through here as well. It's very important, people. It's very, very, very important, people. Very important. Also, thank you so much to Maria Humphreys for opening up the episode. And yeah, without further ado, and definitely without further ado, here comes... An episode of Inspirato Projecto. Now, of course, real fast, <laughs> send me any of your audio if you want to participate in the shenanigans known as Inspirado Projecto. Inspirado Projecto. That's the official theme song. Uh, and then if you want to call in, of course, 561-203-9179, or here's how that theme song goes. 561 <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, call us up, call us up, leave a message. We want you to be included. Goodbye. For now. When you're lost, who do you want to find you? In what form does this creature manifest? And at what time in the night does he come for you? Every year, millions of hardworking Americans experience cosmic encounters with moderate to severe disorientation. Christor can help. Christor is a handheld calcite defibrillator capable of generating surges and binary distress signals throughout the Sigma Quadrant. Christor is not for everyone. Some aquatic mammals have experienced dizziness and confusion while using Christor. Side effects do include blood glow, tear mist, and purpling of the skin and eyes. Tell your doctor if you are pregnant and have not had intercourse within the past 18 months, or if you are nursing and have no children of your own. Christor has not been approved for simians or micropachyderms. Ask your shaman if Christor is right for you. Isn't it your turn to bear the crystal? Here's your fun fact. All kittens are born with blue eyes. They begin to change color at about two weeks after their eyes open. Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. I just got to say real fast right here, ladies and gentlemen, I mislabeled uh, what I said there in the opening. It is not from Christor Inc. However, they are associates of Christor Inc. They are the Varels Bridge Society. The Texas ambassador himself uh, gave us that call. Very important. Very imperative. It's, it's Stick around. He's going to be after this extraordinary interview. With DJ Scaramanga Silk, the one and only official DJ of Christor Inc. Uh, and thank you, by the way, to Maria Humphreys for at the uh, top of the hour being that book and to this extraordinary story. This is a variety show, after all, folks. This is this is what it's all about: collaboration, reciprocation, precipitation, onward and forward, and so forth. Thanks for listening. Now, who are, who are some of your musical influences? As, in addition yeah. to KLF, in addition to KLF, because I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of music, so I try to be as eclectic as possible, um, partly through trust, but also. Because I worked in record shops and I was, you know, responsible for buying in records, I had to have a very, very broad spectrum in order to, to cater for for the store's needs. So, and also, and also being a creative person, I think trying to keep an open spectrum is really, really important because otherwise you become too narrow. But in terms of, you know, absolute influences, 
just limiting limiting it to music and I, I, I try not to limit it to music which I'll get to in a sec but it would be all, I grew up in like the rave era so all of the sort of record labels like Moving Shadow who did, who did all the sort of drum and bass hardcore production house records and then a lot of techno artists and then basically you know all of the classics so your Underworlds your Prodigies oh, yeah. your Left Fields all of those they're the sort of big thing so that the electronic dance music thing that was really the sort of thing that's at my core but you know i have massive uh enjoyment respect and admiration for the likes of people like george clinton all of the p-funk movement um i love brazilian music so people like bebel gilberto um uh, you know, ambient artists, so you know people like Global Communication, Mark Pritchard, Tom Middleton. You know, in terms of you know, classic house music, um, jazz as well, a massive thing. Hip hop, uh, soul music, uh, all of that kind of stuff. But and then, I mean, that's in terms of direct inspiration and influences. But I try to, I like to look at that whole thing from the, the broader perspective. I think if you're just looking at you know a piece of music that you've heard and then you're trying to follow that i think that's not really the full spectrum of what is actually having an influence on you there's a lot of subconscious things so you know being uh from south london and all of that there's you know very certain culture and attitude to certain things that you know you don't know that you're in so only when you get older you can start evaluating these things and you sort of move around it you sort of start seeing certain attitudes towards stuff you know i've always basically really and still I, the things that really move it are, are innovation that's that's what I'm always looking at. I love the original idea I love people trying something different I love seeing that and obviously with so much music in the world it's harder and harder to sort of see that stuff but there is still stuff out there still a lot of people trying that um, and then also you know other things that influence stuff you know so I, still, I remember when I was young watching Tron and those sort of sounds and that imagery, oh, yeah. I mean, that's impact. You know, that has impacted my music, no doubt. Even though it's you know a sci-fi film, like all of that kind of stuff, and obviously soundtracks, TV adverts, which might sound like an odd thing, but you know, we're we're hammered with that stuff, and you know, the actual art and science behind making really good music for TV adverts is, to me, is a fascinating thing. You know, that you've got that thirty-second sting to. And all you know, the audio branding behind it. You know, it could have a six-note melody on one instrument, and you know, like the you know the, the, the little McDonald's little uh, riff that you know everyone will know straight off the top of the heads, or the Coco Pops melody, etc. All of that, kind of, and then you know the whole uh, you know family and everything that that's just around you, just bringing all that together, and then sci-fi and books. Yeah, just the, the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's a whole melting pot that ends up coming through so in, in what you create, that. I feel. You've done some of the soundtracks for your buddy, you said for your friend's video game? Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, just quite a small little project. Anyway, so, Is that the only video game that you've done? Have you done other so- soundtracks for other... I remember no, you said Brand New Volvart, yeah. they have some of your music in there. That's right, yeah. So, that, so basically... Yeah, it's originally part of the the, the Esquire. So um, when I worked uh, with Spencer and then started and obviously uh, with Wiley or Chris Store and stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, I've done very little else in the terms of sort of soundtrack stuff. It's an, you know it's an area that any musician, any producer um, is into and you know likes to explore. I think it's a real art form as well. Um, and yeah, something that maybe in the future I will potentially visit again. Because um, if you're saying you're into science fiction, I mean, can you imagine yourself doing a soundtrack for a science fiction movie? Yeah, well, funnily enough, so the, the album of my designer Scribble, right at the end of it, um, there's a three-track suite. Um, that was actually inspired by the Gold, uh, Goldie, a uh, drum bass artist that we have over here, and The Prodigy. Um, so Goldie, when he opened his Timeless album, he had three tracks that opened it um, in a sort of interlinked suite and like an ongoing concept piece, which I thought was quite different because you wouldn't really see that in that genre. And then The Prodigy on The Children's Generation, they ended their album 
with a, again a free track concept piece so i really wanted to do something like that as a bit of a homage to two artists who massively influenced me and i just think it's a it's quite a cool and different kind of thing to do so what i ended up creating is called the voyage beyond andromeda suite which is completely sci-fi influenced so it goes across three tracks so the first is initially the whole traveling through space and that the whole sort of classic sound but with some other sort of genres put in there so there's some ambient stuff there's some sort of drama bass stuff a little bit of techno then the second track goes into like a classic battle so it's like two sides having a bit of a shootout in space and it's a much more aggressive track which just fuses a sort of style called jungle techno which we had here in the uk which is like that sort of hard 4-4 techno but with sort of breakbeat over the top and at the end it's the sort of the new uh, rebirth so after the devastation of the battle then a new world is born so that sort of matrix-esque ending to that trilogy so that kind of journey so that is that's kind of like even though it's not attached to a film um funny enough that is one of the tracks that ended up getting used in grandview boulevard oh that's cool yeah wow yeah so, so into the concept stuff as well so now with um uh, your involvement with Christor inc what um I, I just love that they got your name up there uh you and this <clears throat> they're also <clears throat> quote this woman um sister rose i believe have you met yeah. some of these other people out out in uh, person some of these other folks that are involved so in this is this is the this is the thing so i'm in the uk and i haven't met any of these people face to face which i'd really love to obviously when hopefully when things change in the world that is something that i i'd, I'd plan to do i'd love to get out over there and um you know engage with these people because uh, they're all fast well i know you've you've had a few of them as guests on, on your podcast and you know those talks that you've had are endless and you know you're only just touching the surface and even then you've got amazing stuff from them uh, these are fantastic creative minds and um you know they're the sort of people that you want to be around um so yeah I've, I've, it's all been virtual it's all been virtual for me there was a screening of the esquire um, several years ago which I was invited to but unfortunately I couldn't get out to the States at that time because I would have loved to have, to have been there and, and to have seen that It's cool to see how they were able to bring it and weave it into this whole mythology of all this other stuff it just keeps building and growing doesn't it Yeah I mean who knows when it'll stop I don't think it will stop um, you never really know what those guys have got planned next Um you know, the whole in bright axiom thing was again absolutely fascinating. You know, the fact that they've now got a AMC involved in that world, and then Crystal keeps going, um, and there's you know there'll be more to come from all of that. Um, I, I don't think those guys are are going to stop at any time soon. Uh, I mean, you, you know, you've met some of them and you've spoke with them. Um, they're highly creative people who, you know, when that, they get that seed for an idea they'll come through with something pretty special and pretty epic yeah it's uh it was just such a smart idea with chris to 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 split up um because i'm sure i'm sure when some people are watching dispatches from elsewhere and they're seeing some discrepancies in what's going on versus you know in the institute the various you know uh differences between them it was really cool that Christor Inc. was able to kind of split that into parallel universes. Like, okay, those are parallel universes in a sense. Those are kind of like, they're, they're both, you know, they're both important and they all fall in with the story and here's how they fall in line with the story. And it's just, uh, it's just so fascinating, this whole idea of, uh, you know, they've got these crazy things, Royal Elixir Affinity, Light Juice, uh, Containment Impenetrable Butterfly, uh, Tessa tricks. Uh, I mean, it's like, it's it's such a, it's such a cool thing, and I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being made into a movie as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things that's great about these guys is they're very, very good at documenting stuff, um, which I think it's important for people to, who are creative to to realize that that should also be part of what you do. You know, um, very early on. Um, when I was working in one of the record stores, um, I was working on a different musical project with a, uh, a good friend of mine, and we got called in 
to to the office we thought we were in trouble for something or whatever and then turns out that this particular manager had found out what we were doing um creatively and this was we were, we were quite early on um and he was his first thing was just like you guys need to document everything it's really really important because you just don't know where it's going to go or how it'd be useful and then other people can benefit from it and you can share it and pe- other people can learn and initially at the time i thought that's a bit of a you know i was, I was young um I, I didn't really take it too seriously i was just having a bit of fun making music but then quite quite soon i was like actually this all makes total sense so i've you know i've made a real habit i mean it's a lot easier now that we're in a digital age but you know, back then it's a case of you know getting your your press clippings and your reviews out of magazines and newspapers and all of that kind of stuff um yeah i think you know it's good to make that stuff echo uh for for the future and yet yeah, going back to uh wiley and spencer uh, and all of the team uh yeah what they've done with crystal i mean it's a fantastic website as well um and the, the body of work, I mean, it's it's a, it's a lot a lot of work to, to keep up. Yeah. With what's doing, and um, I mean, I know that you're aware. So they've got a Discord attached to it, um, and that that bunch of people, they're a fantastic bunch of people. You know, they've built an amazing community. They're having a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, the way that those guys are documenting the whole process and investigating. I mean, when I came onto the project. And the sort of my involvement then, you know, became transparent with, like you said, the, the testimonial video. I was I was part of the Discord server, um, and I watched an absolute amazement at the level of detail that these guys went to to investigate any little interaction that I put on online. It was absolutely incredible, and yeah, I've yeah, got so much respect, and I, I I can only imagine how exciting and innovative that must be especially you know if, if you're growing up in this time or you're a teen or you know especially with lockdown and everything that's happening in the world right now to have something like that where you can join a community you can research stuff you can discover stuff you can have loads of fun and you know it's super creative as well and you know they're encouraging people you know they, they they've had logo competitions all that kind of stuff um, you know it's been fantastic to be a part and to watch and to continue to to see where it, how far it develops and yeah i do hope that they document it in um film form in, in in some capacity and i do believe that you're getting sister rose on the podcast at some point which i'm super excited yeah about. i want to i want to interview her and find out what the heck her uh, involvement is with this stuff i mean it's so funny because like it's it's there's always some phone number attached to these things. There's always, you know, uh, secret passwords that you need to find out and, and to put into these things, which open up other things. And then, and then it, it, it's like, it rewards you for looking closely. It, it rewards you for looking beyond what's, what's just there on the page and clicking on something that, you know, and you're like, wait, hold on. That, that just led me. That was a hyperlink. I didn't expect that. Now it brought me to this thing. Like for instance, now there's, I'm on uh Chris Zorch or Chris Zorch, yes, which is great. Yeah, fantastic. Which is like the bad guys, you know, version. That's of it. right. Oh my god, it's just so funny. Like, the, what does this say? Feed the hole or something? There's just That's like right. this digital, you know, sort of black hole thing online. Feed the hole, and uh, they got all these various demented projects, uh, uh th- products that you can buy. A Zinger meteorite. I mean it's it's just so cool and if i'm and i think that the kieran eggs i love this kieran eggs hatch them feed them breed them enslave them and i think that's a grown-up kieran right there that creature that was in uh uh yeah. the esquire right is that a kieran yeah 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 that's right oh my god i mean uh, just touching on what you were saying there Kurt, i mean what i think's great and we're you know we're very much in a world of instant gratification where you don't need to dig too deep to get what you want and those guys have created something where like you say the reward is actually in the depth Mm -hmm. Um, that's that's something i really really personally enjoy but i think it's really important right now i think world building and having depth is where you you know that's where you're really going to benefit from stuff rather than just touching stuff on the surface which is just too easy to just tap on a quick 
you know, seven second video on Instagram or, you know, watch a, a quick five minute thing. And I'm not knocking those things. These are all great things as well. But I think, you know, you do need to have the balance of um, those deeper explorations because they, they give you something that's, I think, far more long lasting, something that you can get better like learnings from as well yeah you know i was gonna say this is like an educational tool this is this is this yeah is a, a so, lens that you get to look through yeah so uh, yeah yeah absolutely absolutely um because you know going back to what we were saying about you know um as you get older the sort of education systems don't encourage the the creativity um, so you know, if there's things out there like this online, and you know, also these guys, a lot of this stuff that they do, it's free. Yeah. You know, it's incredible that they're giving this stuff away, and there's no charge. Um, and you know, even then, I know that's that's been cause of debate and all that kind of stuff. But uh, but to me, it adds layers of intrigue. You know, the fact that this, you know, how is this being funded? Why is it being done? Not? And but. It, because you know as much as we're also we're also in a very materialistic world right or or a world driven by money so if there's actually people out there where you can't understand their motivation because it doesn't seem to be driven by money i think that's really really healthy to show that there's other things out there that are outside of your the 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 most obvious motivations that we have for why we do stuff yeah Uh, again have to be creative to appreciate that yeah it's like the, it's it's such a crazy and beautiful and novel concept to think that people would would go to the uh, intricacy of making such a detailed world um for for the fun of it for the playfulness of it for for just the um in honor of imagination and exploration and it's so cool because these these become lenses that will subliminally sort of teach people to look deeper beyond what's what's right there. Like you were saying with the instant gratification stuff. I mean, um, the, the, these these are analogies that can actually just be applied to, as you know, to call back what we were saying before, law of attraction and the way that the universe works. If if we can, like, with a tool like this that teaches you to look beyond what's there and to follow the Easter eggs and to um, um, follow an inspiration and see where it goes by 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 training ourselves to do that what happens then is that that view now is then transposed upon just the world in general all the world out there in general so now we we can look beyond a situation and go okay hold on let's not count the eggs before they hatch yet let's not look at this and go okay all is lost or this is a terrible situation we have no parking oh we're out at the beach there's no parking you know okay yeah it looks like that but let's just pretend that there's a perfect spot right there for us and it's going to you know it's going to bring us to it and you know let's just see what happens and all of a sudden next thing you know there, there a parking space opens up and, and brings you into it and um it's it's incredible because i think growing up playing point and click adventure games like the lucas arts games maniac Mirage, oh yeah Zach McCracken and uh, Money, monkey island those kinds of games they teach you that type of thing where you go you know, the, the game would be over in five minutes if, if the person was, if if you actually played out that first mission that was given to you. Like for someone's like, okay, go find me. My, my car keys are in my um, coat pocket, hanging on, you know, in my coat pocket. Okay, cool. All right, cool. All right, there you go. There's the car keys and that's the end of the game. No, in order to find the coat pocket, you know, it's it's in the coat, which is in the car, but then you need a another key or someone's permission to get in there. <laughs> you know, so it, it becomes this there are a series of things and you know you might find yourself at a door and you're going okay i have no key i don't know how the heck what i'm gonna do here and if you don't look around hard enough you won't see that loose panel that's hanging out over there you know it's like by looking and and testing out that loose panel now you're rewarded with a you know some switch that opens up this whole other thing and so uh you'll yeah you're so right we we've been primed for this i had some of those games and uh uh, also, the other thing that prepares you for is patience, because um, I used to play those on. You, you used to load a cassette tape. Are, are you from that era oh as well? Gosh. So it's literally a tape into your computer, and then it would take forever. And then you know you'd have to wait half an hour for it to load, That's and then right. you could yeah, start playing that kind of game. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I mean, that is like basically the the eighties version uh, on a really simplistic level. And, it's been now taken it's at its heart it's exactly the same concept you're so right totally totally 
Um, and yeah, I think the more of that we see in the world, um, the better. And um, so I think I wanted to run by you, Kurt. Um, sorry to deviate, yeah. um, but I, I don't know if it's something I stumbled on a while back. I don't know if it's something you're aware of, but I think in terms of creativity, it's quite an interesting model. Um, something that I've sort of tried to apply to some stuff. Um, have you heard of the Disney method? The Disney method? Yeah. No. So um, basically, they came up with this process around creativity. Um, and it says that you need to kind of like wear three different hats. Or ideally, it'd be three different people. And basically, the first person or the first hat would be the dreamer. So this is basically the visionary person who's like, here's the big idea. Here's what I want to do. But they don't go beyond that. They're just like, here's the idea. And then the second person within that um, process is the, the realist. So this will be your person be like, okay, understand your vision. Here's what you need to do. Here's how you get it done. Here's how you deliver it. Here's how you build it. And then the final person in that triangle is the critic. So the critic looks at the other two and is just like, yeah, it's a good idea, but there's this. That's going to be an issue. And then basically you need to be able to wear all three of those hats in order to have a, a successful creative project. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's quite an interest because it's hard to know if you have all three skills, but I think probably the most creative people are able to dive between those three. Some people do it in different orders. Um, and then sometimes you, you do do some of those things in parallel, uh, really depending on how you work. But I think it's a really fascinating more. And the fact that they actually used, I, th- I don't know if they still do, but that I think it was a major part of that organisation. For And obviously, you know, we were all very aware of the sort of work that they've um, contributed to the world. I just brought this up now. I'm looking at this. Yeah, the dreamers, the realists, the critic. Now, what's so crazy? Yeah. This is, this is, oh, man, it's so crazy because like, what, what's what's neat is that each job has sort of th- this helps sort of divide up the mind for, for for artists I think if they kind of go, yes okay this mindset right now is entering the space and being aware that that's that's its own sort of entity and and um, and I think it could help out people with creativity big time because right now as we were talking about before <clears throat> um pe- people will you know while they're in the middle of dreaming all of a sudden then the critic comes in and and the critic's already telling them how that's not going to work and it's like look dude okay you're 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 stepping in a little too early here okay critic go go over there go over there we'll let you know when we need you we'll let you know when we need you right now we're just dreaming you know let us let us at least play with the idea of what could be you know instead of coming up with all the reasons why it won't be or you know um uh, how it won't work because a lot of times the critic is just showing you how it won't work they're point they're, they're picking out the holes they're p- putting out the you know oh that's not gonna work that's not gonna work what's interesting and this this is so crazy because it's like it, it'd be interesting to devise a method let's say for instance if you're the one who has to wear all the hats so, yeah okay the dreamer i'm going to allow to dream you know x amount of minutes or whatever and none of these other you know the realist and the critic they're not allowed in the conversation right now it's just we're just going to have pure dreamers there it is okay now let's move to this the stage of the realist okay now we're going to just only spend time with the with the realist okay now let's move to the stage of the critic i think what's what's crazy is having that sometimes the critic which i view as sort of like the adult in a lot of cases the adult who's got their arms crossed and like oh, I'm yeah. sure that's going to work and then the dreamers are kind of like the little kids who are just you know getting muddy and they're willing to let them get the dirt dirt under the fingernails and uh, the mud on their faces and they're they're just willing to just dive into the thing um what's what, what what's interesting about this method and it's crazy because i would love to be able to figure out how to make it exist um um in parallel with what you and I were talking about earlier, which is, like your buddy said, follow an idea. Let's just see where it goes. Where does it want to go? Yeah. So that's that becomes such an interesting thing because you're like, okay, does that mindset coexist with the Disney method or is it its own kind of rogue 
banned it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, I think you're right. I yeah, no, I see what you're, you're um, getting. I mean, they probably can't coexist. Um, but I mean, again, this is the the whole one of the things that fascinates me about creativity yeah. is like everyone's got their own way of working, yeah. right? It's like you know, when I you know, I don't know how you write your music, but you know, I might start with. Uh, a, dr- a drum break, for example, but another time I'm like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to keep starting with drums. Let's just start with whatever. I'm going to try a little piano riff. Or I've got a, a really great vocal that I want to work with. And then you know, everyone's got their own way of doing it, and um, you know, that's what's part part of the uh, the beauty of the whole thing is just how unique it is and how how you work your own way. And obviously, as we were talking about the other day, the tools that are now available to allow us to arrive at our own conclusions are. Are totally fantastic, um, and you know, looking at that Disney method, I think the critic could also be, even though it's not intended, I don't think in their in their model could be where that's where the lack of confidence might come Ooh. in. That's where the pro- the procrastination ah, may come in. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, it's 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 complex, isn't it? I mean, wow. but it's just you know, it's all, it's all modes of working, ways of thinking. Um, you know, there's there's been some debate around the critic recently from um, again, again the gentleman that I was talking about, Stephen Clark, 1980, who's a great uh, sort of techno artist and also author. He was talking about that, and then Blind Boy, who's like a um, Irish uh, hip hop artist, a fantastic podcaster, um, and he's also got sort of some sort of TV stuff, sort of expose, sort of humour. Um, he was talking about the needs to put the critic out of the way until the very last moment mm. um, which obviously can make a lot of sense because uh, otherwise it can just stop you yeah. or it can just sa- it can sabotage your creativity yeah because you know okay so so uh, for the longest okay so in my brain I imagine there are uh, okay when, whenever I think of a critic I think of I, I usually always just default back to like Roger and Ebert or, or Ebert or uh, uh, Siskel and Ebert, you know, the, the yeah. movie critic dudes. So they're, they're sitting in the audience, they're watching what's going on. Or let's say if we want to move it to sports, for instance, okay, the critics in a sense, it just it, it immediately in my brain are, is the audience. And then, and then the, the dreamers are in a sense, those who are playing out on the fields or those who are up on stage or what have you, or those who are in the movie. So yeah, the, a dreamer, a dreamer does not have the <laughs> the dreamer does not let's see the the dreamer is in that moment the dreamer is in that moment they're they're busy doing what they're doing and then the critics can always say well you should have done this or you should have done that or how come you went left instead of right didn't you know there's a person coming up behind you and that was going to tackle you no i did i didn't i was busy dreaming what i was doing in this moment right now the the critics will always have the luxury of being able to tell you what you should have done, what you didn't do right, <laughs> what you know the wrong way to go. Um, you know, if only you had done that instead. Oh, thank you for the time travel advice. Thank you. You know, so it's like it's such an interesting thing because the critics are there analyzing. It's almost like a filtration system. It seems the dreamers are just the pure open. You know, like the dam. If the dam just bursts and it's like going through. Um, it's almost like it's like you, you you can't necessarily coexist being the person standing on uh, 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 on the shore watching the water go by as well as being the water going by. <laughs> so yeah, it's such a crazy, it's such a crazy thing, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think the way I kind of look, look at this because uh, it's it's interesting. You could argue that there's nothing creative about the critic, right? Right, but. Um, I think the way I kind of use this, from, maybe this is just my interpretation on the model, is, you know, I'm big into the editing process. I think that, and the mix-down process, you know, as, as with music, and I think that's probably where the critic comes in in terms of you know, a musical process or if you're writing a book. So, you know, you've had the idea and then you've had the, the second step with the implementation from the realist. And then the critic is there to but just basically that's where the polish comes in. It's like, okay, you know, that's good, that's great. But here, this is where you cut that down by two seconds, you know, play that key a little bit longer, add an arpeggio here. And it's just those little things that take it from being a you know, an eighty percent product to a ninety five, a hundred percent product. Yeah. 
It's like the George, Sir George Martin of the Beatles, right? He's the guy who's going, okay, we made yeah. all these sounds. Now let's let's do all little intricate stuff in here. Yeah, yeah, and you know, people don't talk about. Well, that's kind of like I think that there's a saying that I've kind of got, which I think I believe that there's art in the edit. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know if a lot of people talk about. That, you know, because you only hear again, you only more often than not, you only see the end product. And it just sounds, so, you know, the real great eyes make it sound like it's the most natural, obvious, and <laughs> easiest thing ever. Oh, yeah. And that's because they're, but you know, as you're aware, you know, there's years of craft and learning and playing and practicing and being out there performing and all that's what it's all boiled down to in that particular moment. Um, but yeah, the, the, the edit, uh, as much as it can be some of the hardest process I think for a lot of musicians because you know I've been in studios where you know we've had mix down after mix down or you've had a technical failure and you know you've had to do 20 versions just to get get it to that and you know you play it to someone who's not aware of the work and they you know they can't hear the difference between version 3 and version 20 <laughs> right. but you can right right so yeah it's just just that um that uh, that part of being a creator that polishing, that obsessiveness. Boy, oh boy. Wow. Wow. I, and that's the thing too. It's like, I, I mean, and I, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but I'd like to, I, I mean, I'm, I'm imagining that the frustration that musicians or, or, or directors or editors might have with their craft is, is that idea of, uh, being at a standstill is that idea of of what they feel are roadblocks that they got to get beyond and and it, it, it would be ultimately ultimately i'm thinking these people want to have a smooth easy flowing easy going process being in the zone the whole time you know really just having a ball with it having a blast with it and and stamping all those good vibes into the into the product that they're making and i'm thinking this you know us looking at this disney method this i mean this is just giving me so many ideas here because i'm thinking it, it for for creators it would be great to show them you know sort of a method that could help um help them be in that state of mind where they're where it's playful the whole time like like for instance you could say uh, okay if you find yourself getting frustrated or, or 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 worried about the sheer amount of you know the sheer volume of choices no worries that's that's just that's just a mindset okay you can let set that over there and then whoop, go over here to this mindset and and activate this kind of mindset that would allow you to circumvent those frustrations perhaps um gosh there, there's just got to be a way where to to apply that method that we were talking about earlier, that's sort of like you know waiting to the last minute and 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 going okay, boom, all of a sudden you're like boom, you just struck with this idea and you immediately get the whole thing done. And let, let's say for instance, if someone gave you, let's say they go okay, you got to start at 8 a.m. and by 8 p.m. you got to have an entire album done. <laughs> you know that's your that's what you oh, got to do. And you know ten songs and whoop, there you go. I think something like that might feel thrilling and might help get someone out of an over critiqued uh mind space 100 percent, 100 percent. that forced deadline um is such a great trick i mean i mean you're probably aware of people in your world who you know i know so many creative people but so many people fail to finished work yeah um and i fit you know it's a shame uh it's such a hurdle and it's so important to finish stuff even if it's at a point where maybe because for me the only i i'm a big believer that the only way you actually get better mm. as a creative is by finishing stuff and then starting new stuff because if you never finish it yes i don't think you get those learnings you just don't advance um, and you know, actually, the more I look at the Disney method, it does make me start thinking. It'd be quite interesting to to play with the method. And like, what yeah. if I actually started off as as a critic, and actually going right? Here's loads of problems with something, yeah, right? And then try and try and approach, uh, add some dreaming to it, and then add the re the realist aspect at the end. What what would that sound like? 
gosh, you know, and that's the crazy thing too. That's the other really crazy thing too that's immediately popping in my brain is the fact that, you know, a lot of times there's this idea of wanting to, um, 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 like, like you know, there are loads of books out there. You know, a, you know the specific method to, I don't know, write a hit song or a specific method to yeah. write this perfect screenplay or this, you know, the perfect method, and what's what's so i could see you writing a book cut if you haven't already you should man you should it'd be a smash maybe i gotta <laughs> you gotta you gotta do it man maybe i oughta gosh yeah i think you're inspiring me to 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 do this because it's like gosh it it's like it's such a it's such an interesting gosh it's it, it's just such a, a crazy thing to try to wrap our brains around because it's like for for every manufactured way that that we try to like pop songs you can tell okay this is a manufactured this is made for this it has a very short lifespan okay here it is and and it's popular for a few months okay and then it goes away then you get those people who are like leonard cohen or bob dylan or tom waits you get these dudes who you know or klf there's there's authenticity there there's a quality that transcends the ages and and it's like there's 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 it, it it shows us that there are vibrations out there that are perfectly in tuned with whatever vibration we are going to put out there, no matter how much overthought we give it or how much we because it's crazy because one person's perfectionism, like um um it might take this person, you know, I don't know, ten years to, to perfect yeah. their very first album. To another person that that could just come rolling on you know they would just roll out of bed and they create something like that and yeah someone might look at what that person who just rolled out of bed and created that thing and they go oh you just doodled you 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 just created a thing you didn't put much thought or effort into it yet yet to the person who spent 10 years to put out a project product that <laughs> that might sound similar <clears throat> um people are like oh this is astounding you spent x amount of years doing this oh my gosh you know you you know you're worth the praise but this guy over here who only did you know who just did an album in a, in, in a day i don't know i don't know if i can respect that and it's like what what the heck you know it's from the same ether it's from the same- yeah i don't it's a strange thing for us to be obsessed over i, I, I sometimes i i'm intrigued to why do people actually publish or make public how long it took them to record a body of work yeah uh, it was just odd, but I mean, I'm sure you've been there. It's so like some of the stuff I've slaved over has been some of my best, but then there's other stuff where I've literally spent a day or two and I think it's okay and it's good enough to put it and then it's really, really well received. Yeah. You just, you just never know. Um, but for me, it's just, it's about the product. I mean, it's just, that's just how inspiration works. Sometimes you, you've had, you, you must have had a studio session where you've just done something and like, idea one i really love this idea how's it sound in my head great that's exactly how it sounds in my head you get it down oh i need a beat to go with that try it and literally the first bit and everything just drops into place yeah. and some days it just goes like that yeah. other days you know two things work and seven things don't or you're just you can't even find the first synth sound that you want or whatever it's just it's just all part of it you just it's just about putting the putting the hours in exploring and just seeing where it takes you every time wow Wow. Which actually, Kurt, would lead me to, um, a, I think it's a related point. So I mentioned, I'm not, this isn't a plug or whatever. Um, so my album, Design and Scribble, the reason for that name is it's about the creative process. That's actually what that, that means. So um, I think we're slightly alluding to it here where, you know, a lot of us who are creative, we're, a lot of artists basically are, are worried that they're going to get found out that we're not really proper artists. So, like, so I, only, I only took two minutes to write that tune, yeah. or I ha- I haven't got a music degree, or you know I th- I didn't study that right. particular thing or whatever. We've all got it's, we've all got that that uh, little insecurity in the back of our mind that we're going to get found out. It's, it's just part of being an yeah, artist. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. with with design and scribble for me, what I like about it is it's actually. A contradiction How, something can't be scribbled and be designed yeah. that's not really possible but what i'm actually trying to say with that title is i'm scribbling and then by doing that and playing with it and polishing it and then working on it and developing it it's also 
a, a polished product at the end. It's about the whole process as in like, I've doodled from a completely blank canvas. I've had a bit of a play. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not qualified, but here's the thing at the end. And this is how it sounds. And that's the finished thing. So therefore it's designer and it's scribble. Brilliant, man. That is absolutely brilliant. Oh my gosh. This is such a great symbolic representation. Just the name of your album alone, designer scribble. That's a perfect symbolic, symbolic representation to actually sum up uh, all of these stuff, uh, these things that we've been talking about here. It's so great. Yeah. Designer scribble. Yeah. Even the scr scribble is designed, you know, the scribble in yeah. a sense, um, it's it's god that's just brilliant because what what immediately pops into my brain is of course like the andy warhol type of stuff where it yes. got to the point where all he had to do was scribble on canvas and that's you know a million dollars in and just uh -huh. you know, it's, yeah exactly it's incredible it's, it's yeah i mean so, so backtrack so the way i arrived at that was um i was at the national portrait gallery in london and like i'm not educated in the world of art um but i like that you know I, you, when you're so close to something like music it's very easy to be like you know i know that synth sound i i know that drum break and, and you know you can just pick stuff apart in a half second because you're so immersed in that world but with art because i don't have any education in it it's just something that i just stumble upon and i've got that naivety like a like a child almost i could just go in and something can hit, can hit me in that, you know, way that you kind of get when you don't know a specific thing. So I was walking around and then I saw a self-portrait by an artist um, who's German-British called Frank Auerbach. And basically the way he'd done this portrait, the style was, it wasn't like nicely crafted, coloured, all these sorts of layers and shades and whatever other techniques you would call. It was literally just a series of, little scribbles mm. but then when you looked at it as a whole you could see a face and i was just like that is genius i hadn't seen that technique done for a portrait and it was it's just i thought it's really powerful and then so that's what sat with me i was like that's what i want for the cover up i wanted to digitize it and make it more modern um so i was fortunate enough to collaborate and commission um, from an artist called Cox and Pax, who is a fantastic uh, digital artist and, and musician as well, who releases music on Planet Mew. But there's an incredible stuff, um, video and visual, um, which I strongly suggest people go go and check out. A great guy, Tom, as well. Um, but then there's a comedian uh, here called Alexi Sale, and I just remember him using that phrase, "design a scribble." And at the time, this is way before I got into creative, this is when I was in my teens, and I didn't really understand the context, but literally all those years later, I was like, there it is, that's the name. <laughs> so it's funny how those things sit with you. Oh, my God. All of those different worlds coming together, so that's literally comedy and art and music all coming together. Brilliant. Oh, my God. Isn't that interesting? That little seed was planted in your brain, and little did you realize yeah. later on it would grow into this redwood tree. And you're like, holy, I love those moments when that epiphany strikes you and you're going, yeah. whoa, this is the answer it's I was like looking like, for. You, yeah, you just know it's meant to be, right? It's like there's just too many paths, you know, like you're saying, the synchronicities, all the, the coincidences, the journeys that you've been on, the people you've mixed, the, you know, the, the art and the music, the comedy that you've enjoyed all along the way, everything that you've absorbed consciously, subconsciously, and then it comes to that moment. And it just hits and you're like, there you go, ready. Oh, man, I love those. I love those. I love the epiphanies. I love it. They're just the cheapest thrill on earth. The epiphanies, the deja vus, the synchronicities, all those little things. They cost nothing. And yet they give such value and and lighten and uh, and and heighten your spirit. And then, of course, that then. So true. You know, what's beautiful is about that. What's great is that that spirit now is infused in whatever next conversation you're having with someone or the next email that you're writing or the next song that you're writing or um the, that that vibe is then stamped into that next project um with with that high vibration and it's it's so interesting because i feel like um 
when when you have that kind of enthusiasm and that enlightenment and you put it into an art project and when people go wow i really like this i can't put my finger on why i really like this well maybe the thing they can't put their finger on is the authenticity is the excitement and the enthusiasm that was that vibe that was actually woven into the project itself uh cuz epiphanies man those are like the most authentic message from the source from from the universe of letting us know yep you know what you're you're touching you know you're touching pure cosmicality here <laughs> you know good yeah. yeah i mean i think it it goes related to that it it actually you know it it gives validation which artists you know do require to a certain extent and it also helps reinforce your purpose by having those those moments those epiphanies that you mentioned uh, which is you know you know a massive massive thing and you know a, a big part of the journey and leading on from that another thing that i find and one of the reasons I would massively really urge people to tap into any creative idea that they have is where those things can take you. You know, some of the people that I've been fortunate enough to meet, to mingle, to share time with, share ideas with, and who are, you know, people that, you know, in the past and still to this day that I admire, look up to, respect, who inspire me, you know, I've been able to, to meet them on a level because I've done something creative and it's found them and they have reacted to it and you know they're they're into it and they enjoy it as well I mean that's such an amazing thing to do which is just you know if you're not tapping into creative you might not realize just what you're capable of and who you're capable of reaching and connecting with and you know it's, this is all about connection that's that's what the art is is there for Wow, absolutely, absolutely. And you know what's so cool is that the imagination is, you know, it's been said that the imagination is where the blueprint is created for what happens out here in our in our physical reality. And imagination is basically the, uh, you know, the, the, the infinite possibilities that are swimming around, you know, that the universe is providing, all possibilities. And um, for us to give give that imagination uh, a platform to 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 live in and to kind of like what we were talking about earlier you got all these ideas and you want to you want to get them out there in the world you want them to thrive and um for them to you know stretch out stretch out there let them out of the cage you know get them let them stretch and go out there and play in the playground and have a lot of fun and you know possibly be enjoying the company of others uh, and it just it feels so good when you do connect with the others who have uh explored those territories i mean it's like it's like the conversation you and i are having right now is is like i imagine if like marco polo and uh, uh what's the guy uh lewis and clark you know if they were to sit down and go oh you know here are my explorations wow that's cool that matches up with my explorations you know and i came across this and i, I had to use my machete and, and chop down the weeds and find a good you know good watering hole that had clean water oh my god me too i had to do that same thing and then i had to find a cave where there are no bears you know a place where i could hide from the rain and say oh yeah me too you know you start comparing notes and there's a big thrill there yeah i mean one of the things about you know about the power of imagination and the gift and one of the aspects that I really really love about it is um, it's one of the things that truly separates us from from other species. I, I, you know, I, I want to be in harmony with them all, but when you look at how many species are on this planet and what you know what separates us, the, the ability for us to you know create paintings and music and art and write books it's so incredibly unique yeah um you know when i got into electronic music i was just fascinated by the whole concept that i can go to a machine or a set of machines put something into those machines it comes out instrumental and then someone else who's not connected to me who could be anywhere in the world can hear that and that emotion, that feeling, that message that I've been in can then translate through a machine, through an instrumental piece of music to that person and it, it, transcend, it transcends language. And I just, that's an incredible thing. And like, it's, uh, I, I think, you know, it's beyond our real comprehension like, as to why these vibrations collected in an organized manner are so powerful. Wow. 
It's so intriguing. Yeah, because you know what? That person who hears your music, that now can become their theme song, you know, for some particular thing. When they're going out, you know, uh, when they're going out or um, um, when they're going through a tough time or when they're going through, you know, an exciting time, you know, that, that your your music might pop back up in their brains as the soundtrack of their life. And it's interesting. There's a really cool documentary called... Uh, uh, oh God! What is it called? Searching for Sugar Man. Have you ever seen that? I've seen it. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah, yeah. How brilliant is that? Incredible. Here's this guy. Yeah, fantastic. That everyone, you know, there are all these myths about him. Did he die? Did he shoot himself on stage? Did he catch on fire? You know, what happened to this guy? Is he still around? Did he die? Um, and and little and yeah, sure enough, he's out there living. And little does he realize that the music that he made long ago is still reverberating through all these people's lives through their you know becoming the soundtrack of their lives and and becoming their protest songs and becoming their anthems and these people completely loving this you know rodriguez's uh, uh music him having no idea that these people even know he's he exists <laughs> and you know here's his music living on through you know decades and, and inspiring all these people i mean that's like that just blows my mind just that possibility existing yeah, it's the most incredible story. I mean, and I've heard you talk about it in other podcasts. It's something I, I, you know, I deeply believe in. Is that all of this is about legacy, right? It's mm-hmm. about passing stuff on, stuff that, that can outlive you. Um, you know, I'm really keen for you know after I'm gone that if people find my work and you know can enjoy it in what in what in whatever way. I think I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, and you know the fact that we live in an age where you know we've got this these networked computers all over the world and this stuff can be easily archived and you know a lot of it you can make available at a very little cost to people so you've got no barriers to access we, you know we're living in a fa- fantastic time and anyone that's, that's creative should you know put as much as of, of their their self their personality and their soul in, into their creations because let it, you know let it echo through time and uh, so it's just a an important I think it's you know I personally think it's massively important and something that we should all be thinking about when when we're at that uh, blank canvas man it's so intriguing because with those kinds of things our spirit is still I love that our spirit is still continuing to communicate with people long after we're gone I mean I can't tell you how many times I've listened to Alan Watts and I feel like I know the guy, you know, he's speaking. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. He's speaking to the stuff that is still applicable stuff that, you know, if you, if you, if you apply what he's telling you about, you know, you're going to find some interesting results and start seeing some crazy, interesting stuff. And I mean, it's like, it's so, it just blows my mind that, yeah, you, you're, the, even though a physical body is gone, there's that spirit still reverberating through the ages, still inspiring people. Um, people are still bringing up Aristotle quotes. Uh, people are still talking about Gandhi. People are still, you know, referencing some, you know, Shakespeare. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, if those guys are looking down, I mean, how much of a thrill must that be oh to know that you've, you've created that and then through the centuries you've been able to have that sort of influence and inspiration for humanity it's just incredible oh my god um and i've got to thank you kurt also because you know from our conversations you've put me in um not in touch but uh you've connected me to some amazing sort of work out there by the likes of awesome wells and alan abel and others which you know i am massively enjoying it's right up my street oh my god um, for checking those you know out, man. That, that no no honestly it's like oh. you know to to be able to connect with you someone who's got your attitude per, persona and but also your you know your knowledge and the fact you're so willing to share it openly um and in, you know bring other people into those worlds you know someone you know, as a dj and someone's worked as a on radio and worked in record shops so that's what it's always been about in terms of opening it up you know finding the the people to connect to you know reaching the the audiences that these things deserve man well thank you man i, I mean it's you know especially when you're going down that alan abel route and you see all the crazy hijinks that he was that he was up to and um 
uh, and I, I did a, I did an inter- a couple of interviews with him a, a while back, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, no way, I'll send those to you. This is before oh, you I'd die. love to hear those. You can hear Thank all you. of his crazy, I mean, crazy stories that he, <laughs> he tried. There's this one where he tried to, uh, uh, he tried to pull off a, um, a hoax of a, of a UFO landing, and uh, wow. they, they actually built like a real size. Oh, wait, what what was it? Oh no, that's right. No, that was the Loch Ness monster prank that they were going to do. They built a, a life size <laughs> Loch Ness monster, and they were going to wow. to get people. I don't know what happened. I don't know. I don't know if the thing fell apart or what happened. But then there was another one where he he did um, he tried to do um, like it like a uh, an ET like an ET landed, and he painted up his buddy in green and everything, and and uh, the cops came out and it didn't you know it didn't make as big of a splash as they were really hoping they were really trying to make the papers with uh, wow i love the ambition of that oh my god yeah it's oh it's it's just so funny once he realized that just just how silly the media really is and and how they're just they're just they just want content you know they just want to put something out there so once he started yeah. seeing that he's like okay i'm gonna leverage this i'm gonna start putting on these fake protests and i'm gonna start you know d- doing you know i'm gonna fake my death and you know i mean there's just like tons of endless yeah so i'll i'll f- forward those things to you yeah put thank some you ideas in your brain are we so are we going to get cut off because we're getting close to two hours oh, yes, yes, yes. i don't it's want to uh, really get compromised i'm glad you said that so what what kind of um where would you like to direct people to find you to find your music to find you you know anywhere yeah thank you um so basically my website scaramanga si.lk um there's a lot of stuff on there and then just scaramanga silk on facebook twitter um and yeah that will lead you to most of my stuff and then uh, the label uh, that i released the album on microspiral.com and kurt thank you so much for having me man this has been super enjoyable um you've massively got me inspired over the last few weeks that we've been talking and it's been amazing to meet you and i'm, you know, I'm sure we're gonna have many more chats oh, yeah. and i wish you all the luck with your projects and stuff and Please keep safe out there, man. Oh my God, absolutely! Thank you. This has been so enjoyable, so high vibrating, and uh, and I'll, uh, I'll 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 let you know. I'm probably going to chop this up into two pieces so I can I can sparse it out. You know, parse it out. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Kurt. Man, you're an inspiration, man. You really live up to the name of the podcast, sir. Oh man, thank you, dude. You're an inspiration too, and and you have a great thank day. You, and man. I'll I'll talk to you later. Yeah, take care, man. Right, Bye. See ya.